Hey howdy hey partners, today we're going to look at Toy Story characters that were revealed for the very first time when we saw Toy Story 2. Let's get into it. You're watching Today I Grew Up. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, as we're on our way to 100,000 subs. Here we have Zerg, Emperor Zerg in his box. It's very important to have a Zerg box in your collection because we actually see the box for Zerg when we go to Big Al's Toy Barn. We are introduced to Zerg who busts out of his box and I'm just thankful that the Disney store, even though this is not 100% movie accurate because obviously there's a lot of things like toy detector and barcodes and instruction booklets, at the very least we do get this attempt of a movie accurate box which I think is a really good attempt at this really nice and the only thing that's missing is the red cellophane or clear uh, plastic paper that, that covers the toy and Zerg busts out of. So I do want to get that and customize it and put some here maybe on the top there and on the sides and in the front. So he has like a red window like we saw in the movie. That's one thing that is missing. I wish mine didn't have this toy detector, but this is the 2019 edition and that's I don't have the original box for the older edition. So... In the future, I hope to get a movie accurate, screen accurate Zerg box. I just need to find a printer to print it for me because I do uh, want to do my own custom box. Disney Store, I don't think sells this anymore, but I could be wrong. I'd have to check again, but it's really nice to have Zerg in box just like he was in the movie. And I'm really happy for this Zerg in my collection. We didn't see Zerg until Toy Story 2, and it's really cool to have this toy. This is the original Zerg I've had in my collection since 2018. He's missing the toy detector because he's before toy detector came out. He's exactly like the Toy Story 4 one that we got, except he's missing the little bubble on his phrases. He doesn't say the no, but he does say Buzz, I am your father. I am your father. I love that he says I am your father. That's something that the Toy Story 4 Zerg doesn't say. And so that's why I really love this Zerg and it's awesome. And I hope to put him in a movie accurate box one day but I still want to be able to take him out, of course, for display. It's a great, great toy. I'm happy he's movie accurate scale. And although he doesn't have a real ball blasting ion blaster, he's still cool in my book and a really awesome display piece to go with Buzz Lightyear. One of the more grail pieces in my collection would be this utility belt Buzz Lightyear. He's just very rare. This utility belt is so cool. Uh, I usually store these without batteries because I want to preserve this one, it cost me $600, brand new in box from eBay, so it's very rare, it's very expensive. If you have one of these, don't sell it. I don't plan on selling this ever because it's just so rare now and discontinued from Thinkway Toys uh, over 10 years ago now. They don't sell them anymore. So I'm really proud of this. Uh, it's the first time we see Utility About Buzz in Toy Story 2, another one of the characters we see for the first time and he finds the truth that Zerg is his father. And it's really funny, they have some fun scenes together of, you know, father and son playing. And it kind of reminds me of the Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker from Star Wars reference when he finds the truth that, you know, the arch enemy is actually his dad, <laughs> uh, which is pretty fun and funny. The next character from Toy Story 2 we see for the first time is Stinky Pete, the prospector, in his box, which is another movie box besides Buzz Lightyear and Zerg, that is really important to have in the collection. I feel, you know, if you want accurate Toy Story toys from the movie, you need to have the Stinky Pete box because we actually see the box in the movie. And it's one of my favorite things. When Woody first meets the prospector, he sees the back of the box like this, and he says, it's a box. And then Jesse says, he's mint in the box, never been opened. And that is true because nobody wanted to play with Stinky Pete, apparently, according to him. Nobody wanted this. They wanted space toys. And that's how Woody's Roundup was later canceled. But that was another story. But it's really awesome. Cop made this. It's custom made. Toy companies, unfortunately, never made this. And I love that this opens like the movie. I put this little sticky painter's tape so it won't ruin the box. Just to keep it extra secure when I close it. But he's in there. He's got his pickaxe back there with electrical tape on the wall. I can remove that. It doesn't damage the box at all because electrical tape is removable and Stinky Pete himself is really awesome he cost me a thousand dollars he does talk and everything but I just keep him without batteries because I want to preserve this toy he's very rare because 
You know, he's handmade. He's a handmade prop movie actor replica. Came with this amazing stand, Woody's Roundup logo, and I, what I really love about it is that it looks like it was um, professionally 3D printed or etched, so I don't want to damage this at all. So I usually just keep them behind glass and I don't mess with them too much because I want him to last me for all time. Very expensive, very rare, and I just wish you know, we get a collection or signature collection version of this one day from a toy company so that everybody can have one because it's really amazing to have. We also can't forget Wheezy. He is debuted for the first time in Toy Story 2, the asthmatic penguin who gets left on a bookshelf. Uh, this is made by Cop also. It's a custom, just same maker who makes Stinky Pete makes this Wheezy. You can squeeze him. He does squeak. He has a squeaker in his mouth, which is accurate to the movie. And this is mind boggling. I wish, why wouldn't Disney want to make money and put this in a bin somewhere and sell them you know they can make you know 20 30 dollars a pop and they can make so much money selling this wheezy because i think a lot of fans would love to buy this i think it'd be amazing so i hope toy company will make this one day in the future they have not so far i'm just i hope they do because it is really amazing to have in the collection the next toy story 2 uh toys debuted for the first time Miss Potato Head was mentioned at the end of toy story 1 when Miss Potato Head was finding out that this was a toy gifted to Andy or Emily, I'm not sure, and, and you can hear the Sarge saying, I repeat, Mrs. Potato Head, Mrs. Potato Head, and Mrs. Potato Head's like, gee, I gotta shave. And then in Toy Story 2, we find out, you know, here's Mrs. Potato Head, and here's my movie accurate custom. This is made from uh, Toy Story custom replicas out of the United Kingdom, and this is a uh, Play School Toy Story 4, and you can see the difference from what the official toy company gave us for Mrs. Potato Head and what a movie accurate Potato Head looks like separate shoes right there these are not separate shoes separate eyes not separate eyes and you can just tell the hats kind of funky too big this is perfect size hat now so yeah and obviously it's just miles better the bendy arms these are actually bendy arms i can bend them they have wires in them these are stiff you cannot bend the, the arms on here so yeah i still keep both though because i like to show people you know i like to keep factory versions of things and then also custom mods but yeah, Miss Potato Head, first time debuted in Toy Story 2. Great character and a great compliment to Mr. Potato Head's character in the movie. We can't forget about Bullseye, one of the most iconic characters of Toy Story. We do not meet him until Toy Story 2 when Woody runs into the Randolph gang in Big Al's apartment. That's when we're introduced to Bullseye for the first time and the rest is history. He's a great part of the Roundup gang with Stinky Pete and Jesse and Woody, of course. And I've always loved having my original, this is the uh, original white logo bullseye. He's the first wave. He came out in 2010 for the first time in white logo. And it was just amazing to add him to my collection. I think he's perfect. Sometimes people ask me on this channel, why don't you make a movie accurate mod of bullseye you don't have to this is this looks like the movie i mean yeah there might be some minor flawed details that are different in the movie i'm sure but to me this is the closest thing you can get to a bullseye that looks like he jumped out of the screen i don't have any issues with this there's nothing to mod on him that i see i think everything on him looks great the only modding we can do is add andy at the bottom of his spurs but I want to keep this one factory because, you know, it's out of production. Think Way Toys doesn't make it anymore. And I just want to keep one mint like the factory came. But that's the only thing I would add is probably Andy on the bottom of his shoes. But Bullseye, one of the most iconic characters we see for the first time in Toy Story 2. Last but not least, my <laughs> Jesse. Jesse the Cowgirl debuted for the first time in Toy Story 2. You can see Miles difference between a custom movie accurate mod versus what we got from the toy factory. Here at the top, I gave her real yarn for hair, which is movie accurate, skinnier hair detail. And Thinkway Toys tried, but they gave us the hair's too stringy, too bulky right there, <laughs> too much hair. You can tell it just looks better with the yarn 
than what they got we got from Thinkway Toys. I think they tried, but I think Handmade looks better. Looks more like what we saw in the movie. Skinnier torso, because is the UK Mattel body. This is the Thinkway Toys collection body, white logo. It's a little too wide. The chaps are transferred from a signature collection. The head is transferred from a signature collection, but I painted the eyebrows brown and it's red from the toy factory, which is wrong. So I had to adjust the color. The one thing I do wish is that the eyebrow was matching this eyebrow. In the future, maybe that'd be possible. For now, I'm just gonna leave it alone because it does look really nice like this. I upgraded real pearlized buttons here. These are fake cheap plastic buttons. Buckle detail is the correct color from Mintel. I didn't have to mod that. This is the wrong color from Collection Jesse. And obviously the chaps have degraded. This is a problem a lot of people are having from their old 2010 white logo Jessies. I noticed their chaps crack and fall off. I don't know what a solution would be for this. They do have some fabric cloth cowhide that we can probably mimic the pattern. But um, for now I got brand new signature chaps that weren't cracked and just this is going to be my perfect Jesse, and this is just, you know, I keep it because it's the first Jesse I ever had in my Toy Story collection, so it is special to me because it is the first one. And it is factory from Thinkway Toys. I don't plan on a mod a 2010 Jesse. These are real denim jeans that I am aware of. Some of these were printed on, but mine is real denim jeans because I can tell by the feel, the fabric, and thickness of it. I can just tell that they are real denim, and some of them were not. But this is a true wave one. I can tell the difference from real denim versus fake. This is definitely fake, but it looks nice. <laughs> this is from Mattel. They didn't do real jeans. They did print it on. But yeah, overall, these are my Jessies. And it's crazy to think that we didn't meet Jesse until Toy Story 2 or the Roundup Gang. So these are very special in my collection. Let me know in the comment section below, which is your favorite Toy Story 2 character that was debuted for the first time when we watched the movie? Which toy do you have in your collection and which one do you want to get? I definitely am very happy with my collection. I love the diversity that I have with custom mods and factory mint toys. And it's really nice to see this collection together of Toy Story 2 characters we saw for the first time in the movies. I still have a question though. Why hasn't Thinkway Toys or Mattel made movie accurate sized toys? Because we never got a Stinky Pete that's movie size, only the custom. We never got a Mrs. Potato Head that looks like the movie exactly except for the custom we never got a wheezy that was movie accurate scale that's perfect for the collection except for the custom so those three characters right there are vastly missing in movie accurate scale for a lot of toy story collectors i'm very thankful i have my customs made for me but not everybody's so lucky to have them i hope one day the toy companies are able to give us movie accurate sized ones as most people in their toy story collections are missing these key figures that are exactly like the movie as always, partners, thank you for liking and commenting on these videos. We're on our way to 100,000 subs for that silver play button. If you wanna help support this channel, all you have to do is hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're alerted for future videos on this channel, and I'll see you partners on the next video review. You want the real Buzz Lightyear? You're, a, uh, you're an action figure. You are a sad, 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 strange little man. You are a sad, 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 strange little man. You are a child. Hey, Ham, look, I'm Picasso. I don't get it.